What's up, Perform? Jason Weiner here. I'm here with Pro Skier and probably the most craziest adventurous you have ever laid eyes on, Rory Bushfield. Rory, thanks so much for being here. Hey, how are you, man? Good, good, man. I've just been uh, checking up on some of your boring YouTube videos. You're a pretty boring guy, eh? Yeah. I wanted to talk about your dog food that you've got going on, Dex Knows Best, uh, the Sarah Burke Foundation. And I want to know, before we get into everything, I want you to tell me about you. Like, what what has spawned you to be who you are today? I mean, all these adventures that you're going on. Give us a little bit of a rundown on that. Uh, I, I feel like I've lived a life and have the opportunity to do all these awesome things. And I almost feel guilty if I don't. You know, mm. So I get out there. And like ever since I was a kid, I've always been an adventurous, always after like, getting it. But it's like, as life went on, you know, I was like, you learn to appreciate more every day and what you have you know i've lost a couple of good friends and some people in my life made me really really motivates me to live every day as, as hard as i can and almost to try to influence others to do the same because like i have so many friends that just stay inside all the time they're like they're not sure and then when they get out there they realize like, i don't know why i don't do this all the time like, i know man mm. <laughs> it's it's here so it's yeah i just try I, uh, I'm just inspired by the, our planet. You know, yeah. it's hard to, for me to look up at the top of a mountain and not want to go there. So, what, what, for, what, you got any goals that you haven't done yet? Any places you haven't explored? I mean, give us a look on the, you know, what's coming up for you in the next six months. I've got some goals for sure. Lots of things that I have haven't done and are in the in the bank. But uh, I mean, this winter I just plan to go just go further and deeper. With with my plane and ski some ski some epic stuff. The last three years I've been uh, I put skis on my plane. I've been learning how to fly into the mountains, and uh, my whole life before that I've been skiing. And so I've just been trying to com- combine it the last few years so that I can get myself out to some epic stuff yeah. and do it all on my own basically instead of having to like spend a bunch of money and have like it, it can be done very cheap and you can get the same thing. You just have to know what you're doing. So it's a lot of. Uh, a lot of practice and a lot of training and a lot of like performance you know you, you can't get out there and not be in the right state so yeah it's life or death so it's it's important to be to be uh to, to be out there and want to be out there it sucks to be out there when you don't want to be yeah you know, when you're hungry and tired you want to yeah. go home and then now the sun comes out and then it's epic it's like, yeah you know have you ever had any close calls where you've been like holy like where your heart's been beating and you've been like it's just been a little bit out of your element tell us a little bit about that i try to make that happen all the time <laughs> you know that's <laughs> that's what keeps you going it's like come into something where you're so scared that you're not really sure and then come out on top with the experience to be able to do it better next time right have you had it like can you give me a specific incident maybe when you've been up okay. on a plane or like skiing and something's happened like can you give me something that's kind of like anything at all yeah, man, it happens all the time. I, <laughs> I could start with an old one. I, I fell in a crevasse one time. Yeah. And I was hanging over the top of the crevasse by my skis. You know, I was just doing a stupid little shot, a little 180 off this, like, ice cliff in a glacier. Yeah. And I headed backwards. I was skiing off the back. I went to turn around, caught an edge, and went directly into the other side of a crevasse. But, you know, like, just wide enough to slip in, bottomless, like wedge, like for sure. Wow. Not a, <laughs> not a good place to be. Yeah, I hung on the edge. Wow. Wow. And my buddies pulled me out, and I sort of just brushed it off at the time. I was, I was just kept skiing the rest of the day. I was like, oh, it wasn't so bad. But every, I think about it all the time. Yeah. That was a really cool. One. That's pretty I cool. I was stuck a couple years ago. I got stuck in my plane, out on the beach. We were at low. We land there at low tide. Yeah. And so and the low tide usually brings in the marine. Like, anyway, you go out there at high pressure, not really knowing. After six or seven days, we run out of food, and we're like planning to go home. We weren't really good at it yet, and uh, and all of a sudden the marine layer started coming in, so we couldn't leave the beach. Or the tide would be high, so we couldn't leave. Fully sunny day, and then you and then we try to leave, and the and the marine layer would come in into the clouds. We we're stuck there for like six days, just fishing, completely out of food, completely stranded. Just surfing, like conserving energy and waiting for good weather. Hopefully, you know, it's like wow. it came before we ran out of like food and water and crazy. All the water. We did run out of everything. <laughs> but it's pretty easy to survive on the beach. It was stressful, you know, in the beginning, but once we got it together, I was with a good friend of mine that's yeah. 
He's a good, good fisherman. So tell so me, I mean, good. if a, if a girl is going to date you, are you going to take her on these adventures with you everywhere, or what? Like, how does that go? How does that conversation unfold? <laughs> <laughs> she comes on lots of the adventures, sometimes, but for sure, I tell her she can't come lots of times. Yeah, because that's how you know. It's like it's not. I don't, uh, you know, it's like lots of times going out there, I don't want to have, like, responsibility. Yeah. You know, the more people you take with you, the more, like, it's nice to be responsible for yourself and bring somebody that'll even look out for you, you know? Right, <laughs> yeah. Tell us a little bit about Dex Knows Best Dogs Food and the Sarah yeah. Burke Foundation. Why don't you kind of give us a little rundown on that? So, I started a dog food company in the name of uh, Dex. She actually claims that she started it. Sarah found Dex under a car. About mm. six months before she passed away, she gave me Dex. Told me it was a, told me Dex was a boy in a Labrador, mm. and this wolf cub to me. Mm. Oh, this girl, this is a wolf cub. So I was like, we'll take her, we can take her back. Like, There's no way, you know. So thankful for that dog. And and when Sarah passed away, we started a foundation mm. in her name to uh, help young kids realize their dreams and their potential. You know, kids that might not have the, ne the necessary means to to get out the, you know, that to get to the mountains or to get to like wherever they're, wherever they think they might succeed or they, they have a dream of being, being something in some sport. And we, we give them a, uh, we give out two, two grants a year for 7,500 bucks. And then we send one kid to camp, was uh, ski camp in the summer. Wow. And that's in Sarah's name. And we've been, we've been raising money, you know, here and there for it and, and doing pretty well. And we're able to give all the grant, those grants every year. But with Dex Nose, we're going to be able to donate a, a portion of every bag sold. Wow. And with the, and we're basically basing the whole company off of Dex, mm. Dexter's kick-ass story, and just basically wanting to perform, you know, at an optimal level, just like a, just like the people Dex hangs out with athletes all the time. Not just me. I go away and I leave her with the coolest people ever. Yeah. I get pictures of like Dex doing the craziest stuff. My girl's an insane hiker and adventurous herself. I leave Dex with her and just every day getting these crazy pictures. Dex lives a good life, and we're made to deliver to your door dog food. Nice. And, uh, it's just easier, you know, yeah. like super easy, super healthy food, price point, and delivered. Nice. And where do people go to find out more about this and to order the dog food? It's uh, at our website, DexKnowsBest.com. Nice. And okay. we're just about to launch. We haven't launched yet, but we're just about to. Okay. Are you guys going to have multiple flavors? Tell us a little about about, about that. Yeah, we got a chicken, a chicken and a fish flavor right nice. off the bat, and then as we grow, we're going to. I'd like to introduce CBD into the dog food nice. and do, <laughs> you yeah. know, it's like just, just try to make it as healthy and as good as like out of the box for people to like, and, and be, a, be able to explain to those people like CBD, every time I tell someone about it, like, oh, you're going to get your dog high, don't do it. You guys really don't understand what CBD is, you know, it's like yeah. just being able to educate people right. through like, through Dax and I's platform to like make their lives better. That's awesome. That's, that's, that's awesome. awesome. So, I mean, you're you're best known for what 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 do you think your stunt that you've done or something that you've done where people are like Rory Bushfield? Like, give us the one thing that you think that really stands out. In the, in the ski world, I guess I'm I'm known for my switch double back. Nice. I was I haven't done too many, but in my in my like probably the best ski ski uh, segment I ever had. With it was in push MSP's push. Nice. And I did a switch double back list. And uh, yeah, everybody's always asking me about that. One. There's lots of other things that I've, stunts that I've done, but yeah, that one, that one in the ski world was pretty, uh, pretty sweet. I stood on the top of my wing on my airplane. That was a pretty good one. That was crazy, but actually. I, I watched that one. That was pretty crazy, standing on that wing. It was all right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know if I, yeah. I've, I've jumped before, I've jumped, I've done some pretty intense stuff myself, but I don't know if I can get myself on a wing of a plane. I don't know if I can do it. <laughs> There's a lot of variables, you know, things can go wrong, the plane's under control, the guy on the wing. It's not just the guy on the wing, you know, it's like the, the pilot and like everybody else involved. Is like, That's a whole different level for me. But It's uh, just calculation, man. I know how to fly an airplane. Yeah. You know, I know how to jump out of the airplane. That's why I feel like... When I started skiing with the airplane, you know, when I started putting skis on there, everybody told me, you're done, but... What, what do you do, Rory, to, like, get your mindset or, like, to get you in the zone? Like, what is your performance secret for the people watching this? I think it's just trying to be ready all the time. Mm. You, know, that you have to kind of be on out in the mountains all the time. Mm. You know, there's no, like, there is a bit of rest time, but then all of a sudden one of the boys like, sun's out! And you're like, oh my God, it's like, boom, everything goes back on. And the less ready you are, the, the, 
you know, the less you get. So really just being hydrated. I'm just trying to I just try to eat high protein diets with with uh saying I, I think being hydrated is something. Mm. It's like if you're out there and you don't have like you don't have enough water mm. and you're not on melt in your snow, it's like you will. Like mm. there's you will have a headache. Yeah. So I mean, Rory, do you have any questions for us at Nutribolics or anything at all that you wanted to ask? Well well, you know, on the other side? Yeah, man, I was I uh I was going through your guys' speed. Thought it was pretty awesome, man. Mm. And I wondered how you guys are all getting so ripped, man. I can never put on any weight. <laughs> <laughs> I'd say you gotta be consistent, you know, and you gotta eat every three hours. I know a lot of people that are like like yourself, yeah. they're into that extreme sports, they forget to eat, you know, or they're just so busy yeah. they're like, oh, screw yeah. it, like I'm gonna I'm not gonna eat lunch, I'm just gonna go up on the mountain and you know, when I eat I eat, you know. So my yeah, my advice is for people like yourself, just like bring like you know, even if it's a protein bar or like a shake or like you know something yeah. that you could just throw in your pocket so that when you get hungry, yeah. you know. But you got to keep feeding your muscle every three hours, you know, because if you don't, then you starve yourself and then you end up like eating too much, right? That's how you see all these people nowadays. They have that like you know dad bod, right, where they think like they're doing themselves this big favor by waiting seven hours and then having this like meal for six you know so i would i would suggest that you know definitely i mean yeah. bringing even some protein powder out with you and just you know mixing it in a drink and just throwing it in there shaking it up takes like a minute of your time but um yeah we um for if you don't know i mean we started when i was 20 years old on my parents games room right and uh, yeah, yeah. it's been about 16 years, and we just hustled, man. We just started from absolutely nothing. I couldn't even afford color ink, you know. My buddies were like, yeah, we're going to print these flyers in color ink. I'm like, no, we're not. We're going to use the black and white printer, you know. <laughs> like, And we just got out there, and we just hustled, and it was just day and night, man, like 10, 15, 16 hours on the road, you know, uh, competing against some of the biggest brands in the world, and I was just this 21-year-old yeah. punk kid living in my parents games room you know trying to build this empire right <laughs> and uh everybody said no to me right so you know i'm the type of guy where you know you know i think i think that i train my sales guys that you know you better get ready for five no's before you get a maybe right so you know yeah. for me i just keep going back being persistent you know and we're putting out great products people were getting results and that's what really built the brand is just putting out good products, being persistent, and just not giving up, man. I mean, that's that's how we're still here, still thriving. I think probably the same goes for you in your in your line of work. For sure, man. I like that story, bro. That's awesome. Yeah. Started all the best stuff started in the parents' basement, man. With everybody saying no, you, there's no. Oh, you can do that. Hey, I really appreciate you coming on today and, you know, sharing some of your insights and info. I mean, I'm sure our people are going to love it. And, you know, thank you so much, man. We'll be in touch. All right, on. Thank you, man. All right. Take care. Sure.